This is Front Row MMA. We're here at UFC Fight Night in Stockholm for Gustafsson and Johnson, but we're lucky to, enough to be joined by, uh, I think, tough standout and, and, and going to be a tough legend, uh, d despite you know everything else you're going to do. They're going to remember tough. Uh, Michael Chiesa, you've got uh, a fight coming up against a very dangerous Canadian lad. Yeah. And, you know, he, he, he came in against Ally Quinta and, and, and shocked the world. How much are you looking forward to testing your skill set against him? Because I know you were disappointed in the finish of the last fight. Yeah, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm definitely looking to get back in the win column. Um, you know, I got a little extra motivation on top of coming off a loss with, uh, you know, his manager calling and asking the UFC to fight me on two different occasions. So I got to make this guy regret his decisions. Um, he doesn't understand that I'm a much more cerebral fighter. Uh, he just he just caught Al when he was in the moment, beating him up and just kind of lost position. And, uh, you know, he's not going to get that fortunate against me. I'm really going to throw him a whooping. So he, he's going to regret that decision. You know, is it nice sometimes to have the bullseye on you? When people are talking about you, it means they they want what you've got. Do you take any offense to it or is it just part of the fight game? No, I don't mind it at all. It's like, you know, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to fight and it makes my job easier if guys call and ask to fight me. Cool, let's go for it. It makes it easier because, you know, when I'm talking to Joe Silva and he goes, well, who do you want to fight? I'm like, <laughs> Anybody, somebody, somebody, you know, uh, you know, I got my sights set on a lot of guys, but, you know, I just haven't been in that mode to call people out. So uh, Mitch is just making my job a lot easier by calling me out. But will there become a point where you asked Sam just earlier, you know, the, the quiet man nowadays seems to be the overlooked man. Is, is as a fighter, do you think it, it's important now to tell people what you want to use the names of the competition you want to face? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to you got to be heard. I mean, this is there's almost 600 guys on the roster. You got a lot of superstars. You got a lot of great up and comers. You got a lot of guys getting overlooked and the guys that stand out are the guys that that talk the loudest. You know what I mean? But with that, you got to be able to back it up. You can't just, you know, I, I've just wanted to build myself up to where I can I can get out and be this brash personality, but I just want to make sure I have the skills behind it. I have all the faith in myself in the world, but I just want to make sure that, you know, skill-wise, I can, I can back it up. So You'll have been asked this question a thousand times, and I, I, I haven't asked it, and I'd like to know the answer. Just how... Just how tough was that? That, that uh, just how tough was that? Tough. That's terrible. Just, you know, going through that and and with the the poise and the dignity you did. How hard was that? You know, it was hard, but sometimes. Um you know, you get put in these situations in life, and it depends on your your per, your perception on it. Like for me, yeah, it was the worst thing that could have happened to me at that moment. But it's one of those things where this is where this is where good fighters become great. This is when you can. This is something that is going to cement my legacy. Like no matter what happens from that point on, people will remember that I'm that kid that gutted out the loss of his father went on to win the win on, went on to win the ultimate fighter so that just stuck in my head like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna see this thing out I'm gonna win this show and uh, you know um, if that's all my legacy is remembered as then you know it, it's it's almost a bad thing to say but I would be content I would be content could be a whole lot worse I suppose you know the, the last fight the stoppage for the cut uh, at the time certainly in the cage you were very very disappointed very yeah. angry do, do you stand by that or haven't you know can you now look back and go well man that could have been a whole lot worse no I'm still pissed off <laughs> um, you know it's one thing if you're totally getting your ass kicked and you get cut and they stop the fight and it's like all right well you know, you, you take it on the chin and you walk away, but uh, I mean, I was never out of that fight. Anybody that's watched that fight could see that he was getting bombed on from bell to bell and the momentum, there was definitely a big momentum shift uh, going in my favor. So, you know, it's just, it's always going to be a tough pill to swallow and best believe after I make short work of Mitch Clark, I'm going to tell Lozon that he's got to get back out there and fight me again because uh, I'm not, I'm not going to let it go until he either retires or gives me my rematch. <laughs> Look, you're making your way up and through the rankings. You, you deal with with Mitch Clark and then Joe Lowe's. How, 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 how long do you think it's going to take before you're in that top one or two, one or two in the rankings? Yeah. I know up here you're probably already there. By the end of the year, um, you know, my plan for the year is go 3-0, 4-0, um, have an undefeated year and, uh, you know, crack the top 15. I mean, I've been right on the brink each time with the Masvidal fight. I was right there, you know, and he's ranked like 12th right now. Lozon was ranked 15th when we fought. You know, I was taking it to him, so I've just been right about to just go over that hump and I just have these small setbacks, but I'm 27 years old. You know, I'm not young, but I'm not old. I'm right, I'm right where I want 
want to be, you know, I'm not even cracking into my prime yet. So I think by the end of the year, people are going to be talking about me being a contender. And best believe by the end of 2016, I'll be in line for that title shot. Hey, look, we appreciate your time, especially in knowing that you, your team, at you, the guy is just finished. Before we let you go, there's anybody you'd like to give a shout out? Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, no, I just want to thank Sam Cecilia for going out and knocking that guy out. Um, <laughs> it's just we've, we've always talked about it. I mean, the people that have trained with Sam know how good of a fighter he is and the tools he has. And, and, and I, I just want to thank him for going out and knocking this guy out because now I'm more, motiva more motivated than ever to go home, go train, go beat up Mitch Clark, just keep the ball rolling for us Washington boys. So i got to ask one more for our colleague who's not here, who's trying to grow a beard. Yeah. What's the secret? Lots of vitamins and don't be afraid to trim every once in a while. Could, could, you, just, could you just say, Sean, don't forget to trim. Sean, don't forget to trim. Little small amounts every couple months will make it grow. A little trim like this every two months will make it grow that much. So, a little trim job. Sir, thank you ever so much for your time. It's been Thanks. a real pleasure and I honor. Thank it. you. Thanks, guys.